a wonderful sort of uh, murmuring delight uh, as you gather for worship. I'm so grateful to be in a place where we remember what it is to be people of hope and people who witness for the grace that is real in this world. And this morning you are blessed with, uh, and we are all blessed, with this tribe of people in red shirts. Um, we have this Sunday the opportunity to hear the hearts of the people who were on the uh, ASP mission trip. There were 48 in number uh, who went and experienced many things, and they'll share that with you. Um, but I just want to say... Thank you. On behalf of the movement of Jesus Christ, on behalf of the world, on behalf of me, who desperately needs to remember that life happens and people can make such an immense difference. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your witness. And I think you could join me in that. to draw your attention to some of the other ways we celebrate life here in this church. Uh, we are part of an organ concert series, and it will be coming to our church, and incidentally, our own Andrew Galuska is playing this Tuesday at 12.15, where I, there he is. Uh, <laughs> so I hope that you will drop whatever it is you might be doing at 12.15 on a Tuesday. Uh, come and share in the music. And um, what's really making me laugh about this is every once in a while, a song will come up, you know, a normal kind of a Beatles song that everybody knows, and Andrew will say, what is that song? <laughs> and so what's wonderful is he's playing a riff on the Beatles, yes? Among other things. So um, please come and enjoy the gifts that Andrew brings to our midst. I uh, also want to draw your attention to a very important meeting next week at 10 o'clock. Our leadership board will be sharing with you what uh, we've been doing as we build uh, the infrastructure for a new way of doing church together. So it's really wonderful to be able to share what's up in the church. Uh, so please plan on staying after the uh, 9 o'clock service next week, and uh, all your questions will be answered. There you have it. That's all we ask for. Will you uh, rise as you're able, and will you sing this song to your creator and to creation? Let us sing.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the miracle that we experience when we serve other people. We are grateful for our connections with one another and grateful that through the community of our faith, we get to help heal one another. We are thankful for an amazing trip to Kentucky this year, and we are also thankful for all the ways in which we serve and reach out in this church, whether through Mission U and UMW, Saturday noon meals, helping out with schools and back to school programs, and so much more. We are also thankful for the lives of people who care for and serve us. We need one another, and we need you, God. We pray for our nation as we continue on in a chaotic political process. We pray for our nation as we watch more and more tensions rise, more violence and racism and hate crimes. We pray for Orlando, Miami, Baton Rouge, Dallas, France. We know that change starts right here, right now, with us committing to love every neighbor, no matter what they look or act like, with us practicing vulnerability and listening intently. Be present in our stories today. May every life story in this room remember its call and feel your spirit at work in them today. Amen. Are any of you guys four? You're four? Yeah. I have a new friend whose name is Morgan. Do you see Morgan? She's really silly. Morgan likes to do silly things. Like, do you see, how does she have her sunglasses on here? They are, they're upside down. Isn't that silly? She likes to blow bubbles and do lots of silly things. But guess what? At Morgan's house, when it rained, the water came into her house. I know, right? And there were holes in the walls at Morgan's house so that bees and wasps and other icky bugs would come in. And Morgan and her family had to worry about those insects biting them, stinging them, them getting hurt. So Morgan's house wasn't warm. It wasn't safe. It wasn't dry. But do you know what God asked us to do? God asked us to help Morgan and her family. 
He asked us to make our house warmer so it would dry. Because, do you know what? God's all around us, right? Is he all around us? But have you guys ever seen God with a hammer? Hmm. Hmm. Have you ever seen God with a drill? No. But guess what? Those people over there in red, I saw lots of them with hammers and drills. And we got to help Morgan and her family and the six other families make their house warmer so they dry. That's a pretty awesome thing, isn't it? So friends, I am hoping that through the years, you're going to get a chance to serve ASP too. When we were down there, the president of ASP gave us this plaque, and that's thanking our church for 35 years of doing this kind of work. And I am hoping and I am praying that, that maybe someday you get a chance to serve ASP as well. So let's take a moment and, and do a short prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that someday we won't have friends that worry about holes in our floors and roofs and animal, uh, animals and bugs in our houses. But as long as those people still exist and need to be served, we pray that our church and ASP will continue to help lead and bring forth your mission and to be your hands and feet for all of the people that need it. Our theme verse on ASP this year came from the book of Ephesians, which named us all as God's handiwork, created to create, given hope so we might give others hope. We read today from the Message Bible, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exalted disobedience. We all did it, all of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with us, the, with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all of this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in the highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now God, has led, or now God has us where he wants us, with all the time in the world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from the start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing. Now we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join with him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. So I'm going to invite our ASP crew to come up and share uh, a tune with you. So the story behind this song is that, if, well, if you thought that traveling with 48 people, living in a community with 48 people in a non-air conditioned space in Kentucky for a week would be challenging, you add another 40 people to be living in that same space with you. Every year uh, when we go to a site, there's usually another church or two that is at that site. And so there's actually 80 people living in a community with one another for a week, which was wonderful. And we need a way to introduce ourselves to one another. So the three churches all prepared some way of introducing themselves. And so for the last uh, however many years, our youth have rewritten the words to a popular song. Uh, this year it was Annika Zimmer and Daria Kuhn who wrote the words. So enjoy.
start over, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Kira Nichols, and I will be a sophomore at Zimbardo Manzapa High School this upcoming fall. I got, this was my first year in ASP, and I was ec ecstatic to go this past month. I got involved in ASP through my sister, Linnea, who was unfortunately not able to be here due to previous commitments. This was my first year in ASP and my sister's last, so we thought it would be fun to bring my dad, Craig, along with us as well. And I wouldn't change the experience for anything. I was put on a team with all newbies this year, except for one. Needless to say, it was an interesting time. While we were in Knox County, we got the chance to serve a family with a precious four-year-old girl. We instantly bonded. Whenever she and I got the opportunity to spend time together, we would spend it blowing bubbles, coloring, or her favorite, sticking plastic gems to my face and insisting that we needed a picture together. Throughout the whole week, she referred to me and the other girl on my team, Sydney, as her girls, and she would yell things at us like, I miss you or I love you as we were working on the roof or on ladders. Pulling up to the home, I was ecstatic. I couldn't wait to meet the family and get started on the project. My team was told we were going to start shingling for the trailer, but first we needed to replace the fascia, which would only take us one to two days. It took us the whole week. <laughs> While we were replacing the old fascia with new, we discovered more and more wasp nests, and we ended the week by killing 17 wasp nests with only one person being stung. We worked hard throughout the week, and by the last day, we got all the fascia replaced, started shingling on the roof, and got one piece of siding up on the home, and we felt pretty accomplished. Going on ASP this year was a big step for me. I was afraid to come out of my comfort zone and travel across the country with people I didn't know so well. As some of you may know, it's a UMC tradition to give a gift to the family at the end of the week. Well, my team had recently found out that our family had been living for quite a while without hot water. Knowing that broke my heart, so as a team, we decided to give them a water heater. While saying our goodbyes and giving our other gifts, which included bubbles to the four-year-old girl, we were told the family about the water heater. The homeowner's wife started crying and thanking us profusely, and the homeowner himself hit his head and claimed he was tired, not wanting us to see his tears. Now, as we were waving and giving goodbye hugs, the four-year-old girl took my hand and made me glow blow bubbles with her. And when the time came, she didn't want to give me a goodbye hug because she knew that hugs meant goodbye. Even though our trip to Knox County is over for the year, the memories will live on. We will remember not to wear rubber gloves on hot metal roofs, how to spray wasp nests and run, and exactly what sandwiches our families like. From the bus rides to crazy trips at Walmart, this mission trip was unforgettable. My team was extraordinary, and the family we served changed my life. Yes, my team was the one who fixed their home and brought them sandwiches, but they showed me what it is like to be grateful for everything you have, love and accept one another, and to be able for ha to be able to ask for help when you need it. And for that, I am forever grateful and in debt to them. Thank you. Don't let the fear of what you can't do stop you from doing the good that you can. This was said by an incredibly selfless man who is known at this church for his work with the YAM mission trip to Guatemala, Dr. Mark Callahan. Although I didn't hear this quote until I got back from this year's ASP, it sums up my experience. My name is Daria Kuhn, I was on team four, and this was my third trip to Appalachia as part of ASP. I go to Century High School. I've always loved this trip. My first two years were learning about how ASP worked in general and how to connect with the family. I felt like the setup was familiar, and then this year came along. We would be going down to Kentucky with only three returning adults, one of whom was taking on the huge task of organizing the entire trip for the first time. Thank you, Brenda. As far as having new people on our team, Team four was pretty well off. Only two of our members were new to the trip, and only one I was unfamiliar with. But as the trip drew closer, I began to worry. It's hard not to compare teams from year to year, and team six from last year was awesome. I wasn't sure team four would live up, but don't get me wrong, I loved everyone on my team. I just had this nagging fear in the back of my head. And so we went off to Kentucky. Now, you may be wondering why I haven't actually talked about my life-changing experiences on the worksite, how deeply I bonded with the family, or how well our project went. I can simply say that this year, none of that happened for me. 
Our family was nice, but tended to keep to themselves with three exceptions. One was Heidi, a man who could talk to you for hours about sports and his especially favorite subject, the Green Bay Packers. Now, I'm not a huge sports fan, fan or a Packers fan, so I really didn't bond that much with Heidi. Only two of the kids on our site, of which there were six under the age of five, talked with us at length. Our workplace was a small bedroom with a four by six and a half foot hole in it, and we had to worry about children running into the room and falling through. At the beginning of the week, we had been given the task of fixing a spot in the subfloor where the wood had become rotten, and then we would be moving on to tile the floor in the bedroom, and if we had time, the adjoining bathroom. But no matter how hard we worked, we just couldn't seem to keep up with the project's schedule. We kept having problems arise. I was feeling extremely discouraged by Tuesday, and this feeling only continued. The end of the week was extremely difficult. We finished off Friday by staying at our work site until 7 p.m. Typically, we left at 4 or 4.30. We barely made it to that night's evening gathering, or EG, and we only made it because they were waiting on us. Friday night EGs are share circle, a time when everyone at the center, we typically share with one or two other small groups, shares a time during the week when they experienced a God moment. I was seated about halfway around the circle, so I had time to contemplate my week a little bit more in depth. And as I did, my God moment changed. Originally, it had been whenever a piece of wood fit perfectly the first time, but I had a sudden realization that mine was not a single moment, nor did it actually have anything to do with the work site at all. Our team had all gone through the exact same week and experienced the same challenges. We had bonded over the 20-minute drive to our work site and the cow spotting game we played on the way there, and had even created nicknames such as Swaggy P because my teammate Peter didn't know what a door swag was. I realized that God hadn't intended this year to be about accomplishing a construction goal or about creating a deep, meaningful connection with the family. He meant it to be about creating a relationship with my team and persevering. Don't let the fear of what you can't do stop you from doing the good you can. The truth is that we couldn't accomplish our goals, but we could do our best to lessen the coming work crew's loads, and we could impact the lives of, lives of those around us by simply going through the same experiences. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Annika Zimmer, for those of you who don't know me, and I will be a senior this year at Century High School. While this trip was my third year I've gone on ASP, today is the first time I've been able to participate at this special service. As many of you know, this year was a year of many firsts for the ASP trip. To name a few, there were changes in leadership and experience. We left for the trip a different week and a retreat center was in a different location. I was expecting those changes, but as I thought about what I would say to you, the congregation, I realized there were many more firsts that occurred for me. Every year, on Sunday night when we arrive in Kentucky, a youth and leader go on a home visit to meet the family and see the work that needs to be done in the house. Dave Lucas and I were lucky enough to be the first to meet Retha, our homeowner. She greeted that she greeted us that night with a very enthusiastic and welcoming personality. I never would have known that my work crew was the first group to help come fix her home. My group was given the sole task of replacing and repairing her sagging kitchen floor. At all of the sites I've worked at in the previous years, there's always been multiple tasks to complete, so only one project confused me at first, although fixing her floor was the most apparent safety hazard. By the end of the week, my group had completed major removal of appliances and flooring, dug four post holes, thanks to Braden, and replaced all the joists. Every day, it seemed like we were telling Retha another part of her kitchen couldn't be in use, which, if that was in my home, I would be a little discouraged. Retha's persona and positive attitude still ceases to amaze me. She proved to me that that's the reason we go to Kentucky. It's not the physical work, it's the people we meet. Every day she would sit in a chair 
in her living room and watch us work. When things slowed down, I had a few opportunities to talk to her. One of the most memorable things she said to me was the reason she watched us work every day. She said something along the lines of, I watch what you are doing. Sorry, guys. I watch what you are doing because maybe I will learn something new. There have been so many great and wonderful new things I've learned from my many years on ASP that have taught me how to be a better person and strengthened my belief in God. I will never forget how these trips and the relationships that come along with them have changed my life for good. I want to give a special thanks to all of the wonderful youth who have joined me on this trip, as well as my leaders this year, Mary and Dave, and a special thanks to my group members, Laurel, Christian, Cooper, and Brayden. I also have to thank my team leaders from the past two previous years, Gary and Laurel I, which was my first year on the trip, Tom and Mary, which was my second, and also the fabulous women who have created this experience for me, so Jen and Brenda. And last but not least, my family for supporting me in all the years I've gone on this trip. Thank you. We are honored to offer our hands and feet in Kentucky, and we are incredibly thankful for all the ways you give because it's only because of your gifts of prayer and financial support that, it's, that this experience is possible. Every way you offer yourselves to serve and give in this place changes lives. So let us take time now to give our offerings to God. Will you join me in prayer? 
God of love and light, of Kentucky sunsets and Rochester summers, we ask that you will take these gifts and multiply them. May they help make homes safer, warmer, and drier. May they help youth find hope and community. May they help put food on tables and give children a safe place to stay in Rochester and Kentucky and Guatemala and throughout the world. And so with hope and unity, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Darlene Lucas, and I've done other work camps with youth before, but this was my first ASP trip. We're supposed to tell you what grade we're in, but I haven't been in a grade in 50 years. <laughs> my husband and I decided to go on this trip, not only to facilitate the mission of ASP, but to introduce another dimension for the kids to experience, another generation at work and at play. Uh, David and Simon Kennel actually were second place in the beanbag tournament. <laughs> I hope we made a difference in some of their lives, but that remains to be seen. <laughs> the 10-year-old boy at my work site did ask me if I weren't a little old for ASP. <laughs> then he saw me in action. <laughs> As we prepared for this trip, we had enough people to form seven teams, each with two adult leaders and five youth. Shortly before leaving, one of the girls on my team was unable to go. It was too late to accept and orient another applicant, but one slipped in under the radar. Many of you have heard of the Flat Stanley projects used in some classrooms, where kids send a cardboard likeness of themselves around the country to see what adventures they can get into. So, Meet Flat Elizabeth. <laughs> if you come to the slideshow following this service, you will see that she had a lot of new experiences and learned new skills. She was very stylish and wore a theme outfit for every day. America Monday, Tie-Dye Tuesday, Wilderness Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, and Funny Friday. She even bought a swimsuit for the treat retreat. <laughs> Traveling with Team 2, she learned, along with the youth, how to use a circular saw and an electric drill as we worked on a bathroom addition for a woman and her grandson. Our work site was 40 minutes out of town on increasingly narrower roads till we reached a gravel road in Pigeon Roost Holler, Flatlick, Kentucky. Charlotte was so excited to get plumbing so it wouldn't take her all day to wash clothes. Having a place for a washer in the house was more important than a sink if there wasn't room for both. I remember one day she came in just so agitated, she said, how are they going to get my washing machine into that bathroom if there's a sink? Because the sink was to go slightly inside the door. I said, don't worry, they'll make it fit, it'll get in there, They'll put it in first. Whatever needs to be done, you'll get your washing machine. She says, I don't care if I have a sink as long as I have my washing machine. <laughs> After two days on our team, it became obvious that Flat Elizabeth was a scamp who didn't want to wear the required long pants or shoes. So regrettably, she was put up for adoption. Team, team seven jumped at the opportunity to have her join them, where she promptly jumped off the roof. <laughs> the next day, she went with team three, wore a skirt, 
and from the pictures I've seen, appeared to be supervising so as not to get dirty. <laughs> Friday, Team Six gave her a superhero cape, and she wasn't seen again until evening. <laughs> Overall, Flat Elizabeth, like the rest of us, had a good trip, helped a few people out, made new friends, learned new skills, and came home safely. Just a little the worse for wear. She may have a few joints she didn't have when she left. <laughs> By going on this trip, she hopes she was a day brightener. People did start asking me what she would be wearing next or who would get to take her. She brought a chuckle to many when she appeared in the mornings in her little outfits. Most of all, maybe she and I can be an inspiration to any of you who have thought about going on ASP but are on the fence wondering if you can do it. Everyone has something to offer. Good morning. My name is Kristen, a longtime member of CUMC and a first time participant of ASP. As some of you may know, I'll be packing up and heading off to college in just a few weeks. I'm told it's a good time, but I have to admit I'm a little nervous about leaving everything I know and love behind. So far this summer, I've been running around like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to prepare for this next step. Barely taking a moment for myself to be at peace. That being said, I was not excited at all to go on this trip. I was told in advance that we would have to share a God moment in front of the entire group at the end of the week. So I immediately started looking for one as soon as we got on the bus last Saturday. <laughs> looking back on my attitude, I'm not surprised at all that the places I found God were, how should I say this, a little self-interested. For example, at the beginning of the week, I found God in the music coming through my headphones to block out the noise on the bus, and the six naps that I managed to take by 2 p.m. A personal record, by the way. <laughs> Thankfully, my attitude quickly changed as I got to know some of the wonderful people on the trip. It was easier for me to notice and appreciate God's work and the people, things, and places around me. I thought I'd share some of those with you today. I found God in the enthusiasm and knowledge of our ASP staff members. I found God in the kindness of the women working in the cafeteria. I found God in the eight fans blowing in the girls' sleeping quarters, lending a semblance of breeze to the heat and humidity of Barberville, Kentucky. I found God in the puppies born in our work site in the middle of the week. I found God in Earl, a man I met on my first night in Kentucky who welcomed me with open arms and a cucumber. I found God in Kayla, one of the homeowners um, on my work site who managed to show Kurt Kennel and I her home despite the seven children clinging to her legs. I found God in each one of those children. I found God in the six-year-old Braxton who showed unyielding curiosity and hunger for cheese sticks. I found God in Caleb, one of the babies who always had a smile on his face. I found God in a community that would wave and smile to literally anyone, no matter if they were a friend, family, or complete stranger. I found God in my teammates. Daria, who somehow managed to cut boards at the exact right length almost every single time. Peter, who kept the mood light and the kids distracted, all while being ravenously hungry. Tim, who was always ready to work the hardest, lift the heaviest, and smile the biggest. Brenda, with her boundless common sense and superior supervision skills. And Kurt, who managed to guide us through our project and keep a level head despite discovering several new projects along the way. In retrospect, I realized that God was doing me a massive favor by sending me on this trip. This new phase of my life will always be covered by the new love, wisdom, and faith that I have been blessed with on this journey and the people that I was surrounded by while I was there. Thank you. I'm Dan Zimmer, and this was my first year with ASP going. Um, in the 25 years that I've been here at Christ United Methodist Church, I've had an opportunity to hear a lot of different leaders talk about this trip. And in the back of my mind, I always thought, I'll get my chance. I'll get my chance when my kids go in high school. And so I waited. Um, then my kids 
got into high school and they said, we want to experience this by ourselves. We, we don't want you going. I think they were a little worried that I was going to embarrass them. Um, so I gave them that opportunity to go. And this third year, they said, Dad, why don't you come with? And I jumped in wholeheartedly. I knew a lot about this trip, about the hard work, the heat, the, we didn't have, we showered inside, we didn't have to shower outside, but all the, all the challenges that you'd face physically, I heard about the hard construction tasks and, and trying to make do and, and make things work um, during that week. I heard about that ASP was about construction on the side with the main emphasis on relationship building. So that's really what I went down there thinking I'd experience. I heard during the week of other things happening with other teams. We had homeowners offering their vegetables to, to their teams. We had uh, homeowners making up nicknames for the people that were coming there. My, my son was named Bones for one reason or another. Um, we, had, we had homeowners that were giving hats and things like that and, sh and, and swapping items. And that really didn't happen that much for us at our site. When Nathaniel and I went out on that Sunday night to meet the family, one member was there, one member of the nine people that live in that trailer. He, came, he was on the porch, he talked nicely with us, and he said, you know, we've had so many families come, we've had so many groups come, and we've met them, and we've opened our arms to them, and it's been so hard to say goodbye on Friday that I don't think we're gonna do that this week. And I never thought of that, about how much they were giving and how much they opened themselves up. It wasn't just us giving, it was them giving. And they continually do that week in and week out. And on the ride home, I was thinking, what would I do if I needed help? Would I open up my house to eight different groups of people coming through to help me? And how hard that would be. And so on Monday, I really didn't know what to expect. It was my first trip. We had what's called Mosey Monday. and. The homeowner was out there, and everybody else was in their trailer. Nobody really came out. We sat there. I looked at Sherry going, what do we do? We were kind of trying to talk, um, and, and we weren't really connecting. And then a little girl came to the door, and her name was Morgan, and we were able to help her come out and join us. And she joined us that Monday. And my thought was maybe she will be that link between us. Tuesday we came out, and the first thing I hear from Morgan's mom is, don't you go out there and be bothering these people. They're here to work. They're here to work. They're not here to play with you. She came out anyways because she's a four-year-old and she's not going to listen too much. Um, <laughs> but I then thought, okay, I need to put my emphasis on my team and make the relationships on our team and really get focused on work because that's what God has brought us here to do. Somewhere in that week, things changed, and I'm not really sure how they changed, but maybe it was that they saw us through Morgan's eyes and they started opening up more, but we did finally connect with that family. Um, Part of me thinks that we were such a great team and they heard our laughter and they heard the Saucy Seven and they just needed to come out and experience this a little bit. Um, but it, on Thursday, all of a sudden, people were coming out. Neighbors were coming over and meeting us. Um, we got to know a lot more about the family. The family actually went to the picnic, which they didn't always, I, I would say some of the family went to the picnic. And we started to get to know them more. And that made leaving on Friday all the much harder and helped me understand some of the issues or some of the things that they were doing of why they, they stayed out for so long. I got my notes here, so I'll go back to those. Um, 
What I really think as I got to know them in that last half of the week was they weren't, God didn't make them for short-term relationships. God made them for long-term relationships. One of the, uh, Morgan's mom had moved there in February and it seemed like she was a daughter already. She seemed embedded in that family and that's really the type of relationships and when they open up their heart, they open it up fully and they don't hold anything back. And that's one of the lessons I think I, I took back from this trip. The other one that I took is I shouldn't wait for things to be the right time to happen. Um, I had been sitting on the sidelines waiting for my chance to go to ASP. I missed countless of the opportunities earlier. And that's something that I'm going to take as, as I go forward. I also want to thank one member of our group that reminded me that when people are giving you suggestions, thank them. Don't say, yeah, I know it. Don't say, uh, don't you know that I'm, I know what's right? Thank them for that suggestion and, and take that to heart. Thank you very much for this opportunity, CMC. This was a wonderful mission trip, and I know next year, I don't know if we'll have a better team than Saucy 7, but um, we're going to try. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, this winter, I was out running with uh, by myself and ended up meeting up with somebody that I know from the running community. And as we do when we run, we share stories. And she's somebody that I've known for a number of years. And through our sharing of stories, I learned that my friend Pam, who I knew had been a lawyer and had been recently appointed a judge, had also been a member of this congregation and a member of ASP. So I invited her to come back today in honor of the 35th anniversary of ASP and our church's relationship with ASP. And so I would like to invite you to help me welcome Pam King, who will be speaking to this morning. Um, so good morning. You know, I've been sitting here listening to the experiences from those that just returned from this trip and uh, brings back a great many memories for me. I went to ASP in uh, 84, 85, 86, and then again as an adult leader in 90. I'm not sure how I did that, at tw that I'm only 29, but that, th that is true, so. Um, what I want to talk about today is not about my experience, which would have happened last week but the impact of my experience decades ago on who I am now, um, which I think is a part that's, that should be celebrated now that this church has been committed to this for 35 years. And I'm going to do that by sharing a story with you about um, my being appointed to, as a judge. I was appointed by Governor Dayton just this last October to become a district court judge here in Olmstead County. In doing that, you have to write a letter of interest explaining why it is you want to be a judge and why you think you'd actually be good at it. And uh, that was a difficult task for me, but in, in doing that I was trying to figure out how can I explain to uh, the selection commission and to the, to the governor who I am and what approach I might take to being on the bench. And I started turning back to my experiences in high school. And so I wrote a letter, and this is just a part of what I wrote. On a high school service project, I met the smartest man I've ever known. He lived in a milk truck, but his address didn't define him. His curi natural curiosity and commitment to family defined him. He taught me a person's value is not measured by monetary wealth, but in commitment to community, family, and an endless appetite for knowledge. He also demonstrated to me the necessity of delving in and discovering all the facts to reach a just conclusion. So that's what I had shared with the commission, and then I got to my interview with the governor. And I'm in the governor's mansion, and uh, there's a big group of people sitting at the dining room table. I walk in, and before I can barely sit down, the governor says to me, so whatever happened to him? <laughs> and I was kind of taken aback and, and didn't quite hear him, and I said, um, what? <laughs> Not exactly the impression that I really wanted to make, but it's one I made. He graciously and patiently said to me, the smartest man you ever met. 
whatever happened to him? And I thought quietly to myself about coming up with a smart answer, and the only answer I came up with was, I don't know. And I don't know because I only knew him for a week, and I only helped him uh, fix his house and make his world a little warmer, safer, and drier. But he enriched my life in ways that uh, still impact me today. So that's what I told the governor. Um, the other story I wanted to share just briefly is a story that happened to me in one of my experiences when I returned from ASP. I have a family down in the Lexington, Louisville area of Kentucky. And every year they have a family reunion down there. And I went one year to that family reunion. And these are relatives I hardly ever see and barely know. And one of them that was from that community sat down next to me and asked me what I'd been doing with myself for the summer. And I told her I'd been up in the mountains helping the people up there make their homes warmer, safer, drier. And she looked at me with absolute disdain and disapproval and said, what are you helping those people for? And I thought to myself, those people? Who are those people? I was helping people because why wouldn't I? Because they have hopes and dreams just like I do. They're raising families and trying to make life better for themselves. So why wouldn't I help them? But those are words that I've heard throughout my adult life as well and many of the things that I've chosen to do since then which have been impacted in a lot of ways by my experiences as a youth when I've been representing people accused of crime, when I've been involved in the criminal justice system, and I've had people ask me, how can you represent those people? And what I've realized over time is, is that what ASP taught me is, is that there is no such thing as those people. Those people is a way to make people not people. It's a way to marginalize those around us. And that nobody should be marginalized because we all have value and we should be treated with dignity. So when I go to court every day, I remember what it was like to be a part of ASP, and I treat those in my courtroom with dignity. So what I wanted to do was to come here and share that with you, and frankly, to thank this congregation for 35 years of commitment to this project and to shaping the lives of those young people in this community. Because these people have made other people's lives in way far away Kentucky warmer, safer, and drier. But what they are building in this community is completely unmeasurable and has made this a much richer place to live. So thank you.